New Order, here to stay on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With we're, we're here to stay. Yeah. <laughs> Over the next two hours. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's Steve Merchant there. Hello there. We're here with our producer here, Carl Pilgrim. We'll be talking to Carl a little bit later because um, we've got to have his thoughts on Aesop's fables, continuing the, the education of, of Carl. We've got some great music coming up, haven't Bloody we? good music. A little bit of, uh, oh, what have we got? Like Happy Mondays. Badly Drawn Boy. Yeah, all that. Bob Dylan. All sorts. All sorts. Coming up. Yeah, so, um, Rick, I don't know, I just wanted to bring your attention to this. Uh, well, someone passed this on to me. It's from the uh, Guardian's Media website. There has a sort of website that's dedicated to kind of media information. Is this about our complaint? Well, it, the headline is Comedian Rapped Over Radio Innuendo. Right. Uh, Jessica Hodgson has uh, written the article. Well, th are you familiar with this? Have you seen well, this? be careful now because we actually got a complaint. A lot of people don't know this. We got a complaint upheld. And, um, well, all of this we're, is. We're in, very sorry. We didn't, we didn't mean to offend. Um, and it was a while ago, uh, so we are going to be very careful. Carl's getting very nervous. We're just going to read out. We're not going to editorialise, Carl. We're just going to read out what The Guardian printed about us, all right? Okay. Comedian Ricky Gervais has had a dressing down from a broadcasting watchdog for his repeated use of the word cock in a lunchtime radio show. <laughs> that's all right. That's what that's it says, fine. Carl. That's fine. He's not, not, not going to say it again. He's not, yeah, yeah. Go Imagine on. Imagine this is the news and yeah. I'm reading it. yeah. The Broadcasting Standards Commission upheld a complaint against the comedian for coarse sexual innuendo yeah. in the programme on London Station XFM. The Commission acknowledged that the presenter's remarks were intended to be humorous, but took the view that the amount and detail of the coarse sexual innuendo had exceeded acceptable boundaries for broadcast, said the BSC, uh, BSC in a statement. The complaint objected to a section in the comic's Saturday afternoon show when he discussed the different meanings of the word cock. Gervais wondered aloud whether the word was acceptable when discussing birds, but not the male sexual organ. A BSC spokesman said the comedian went on and on about it for nearly five minutes. XFM, a self-styled alternative radio station, said in its defence that its remit was to provide cutting-edge programmes for a youth audience. The station said the programme's brief was to include elements of alternative comedy within certain shows that would not fit within a more mainstream radio station format. In this particular show, it was not the presenter's intention to shock when they took a humorous look at how the English language could be construed in different ways within different contexts. Gervais, whose big break was on Channel 4's 11 o'clock show, has shot to household status through the portrayal of David Brent, the middle manager from hell in BBC Two's cult show, The Office. Just in case you didn't know who I was talking about. Yeah, he's a household bit. name, yeah. but they just thought... You might not have heard of him, but he is a household name. Now, um, that, that's good. That's good reporting, and they're quite right about it. And just to remind people, it was when Steve said the only um, uh, bird that hasn't got a penis is the swan, and I went on about the male bird being called the cock, but I couldn't use that to mean, and, you know, it was, it, it was childish, yeah. you know. But what, what annoys me is, I'm sure I've heard things on, like, Radio 1, like that. Oh, what's the, uh, the, uh, what's her name in the morning, Sarah? Uh, Cox. Yeah. And, uh, as there's a DJ, uh, like, like, Carl, um... Uh, Cox? Yeah, so you got... <laughs> Carl! What's the matter? I'm just saying. You're just saying... There, there's a pair of... DJs on, yeah, but you we've know. we've done this. And, uh, what are you talking about? We're just talking it's about... names. They're just saying the names. Now, I love Cox in the morning. You're a big fan, you're a big fan of Cox. Oh. And at night. What's the matter with you? Come on, Carl. Call? All right. We've taken it. We've been... Have you actually been wrapped over this? Have no. You, I don't know what Have that you means. had a dressing down? No. When did that happen? I don't know. I, I was I'm meant to tell you, and I never got round to it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, then. So don't do it again. <laughs> Pinky Afro on XFM 104.9. <laughs> oh, could, I, could I just add that in case yes. you don't know what, what you know, the what frequency, frequency is. is. Yeah, exactly. Uh, why, why, why do they say that? Are they not, so, so you know what you listen to. So you go, I'll tell you what, I like that radio station. Yeah. And it was XFM 104.9. Exactly, exactly. I'll listen to that again. You'll listen to that. You can retune. Yeah. I was wondering actually, Rick. Stay I, locked up this end of the <laughs> dial. True enough. Um, I was wondering, because, you know, obviously we, we're still trying to campaign to get Carl into air, into the air. Yeah. Uh, with the balloon, uh, enterprise. And obviously the work's been done on that, don't fret, don't worry. A lot of people are asking for an update, but, you know, we'll obviously let you know when it's all going to take place. Yeah. But I was wondering These whether- These things take time. Exactly. But I was wondering whether we should also have another kind of campaign, some kind of campaign. Maybe one that could involve you, Rick. Because oh. I'm obviously- No, I'm particularly concerned, Carl, I don't know how familiar you are with this, with Ricky's eating habits. Mm. Because he just he's so, he eats so unhealthily. No, I, it scares I, I, me. No, come on, Rick. Don't give no, me I'm this. I'm getting better now. No, I'm you're not getting better. I have a smoothie every day. Yeah, but I've told you before that's largely sugar. No, a homemade one. I don't care, Rick. That's not enough. It can't counteract. Right, this is idea. This is Rick Gervais's <laughs> idea of healthy eating. Right, we'll be in the canteen at the BBC. He'll go. I'm going to be eat healthy today, which means he'll have two slices of pizza instead of pizza and chips. 
That's basically the, the, that's his theory, right? The, and it's like it's I don't know what because he can't eat anything which is kind of which doesn't is basically doesn't sting the roof of his mouth with, <laughs> with flavour. So like for instance, he, he's always yeah. got headaches. He's always got a headache. Like that's because you don't you just drink coffee and coke. You never drink water. Your your body is dehydrated. And I said, drink a glass of water. No, boring. <laughs> it's boring, boring. <laughs> I don't know if if we were in the desert stranded. Boring. It's boring, Steve. I'll wait till the next cafe. <laughs> Uh, right, and sometimes you'll go like, oh, we'll have a, let's have a, I'll have a salad, right? And he'll get like a feta cheese salad, right? And he'll eat the little bits of feta cheese, leave the salad. <laughs> then he goes downstairs and goes, I'm still hungry. It didn't fill me up, that salad. I go, no, what didn't fill you up was the 200 milligrams of goat cheese that you <laughs> ate. That's what didn't fill you up. Uh, so I just, this should be a campaign. I don't know whether it, I can observe it, people could sponsor him, something. Just eat healthy, we could do it for some kind of big charity. Fruit. I don't think the fruit's the issue, Rick. I can't really. if you mash it, I'll, I'll eat anything Rick, in this I'm mash. not saying that you don't eat a certain amount of fruit, I'm saying that everything else you eat is unbalanced and it's just rich with fat and it's awful. Yeah. It's sausages, it's beans. You're such a working class scum, aren't you? <laughs> it's the smell of chip fat, it's all around him, do you know what I mean? It's like, even when you can't smell it, you know it's there, seeping through his veins. I imagine when he was growing up, it was just chip fat it was. in the house, just a big, it was. Oh, constantly boiling. It always, there was always chips on with everything, exactly. yeah, or fried. Do you want wheat bix in the morning? Deep fat, yeah. fry that. <laughs> It's such scum. And now it's like, oh yeah, my palate, you know, I can't eat anything. It's got no flavour. Everything's got to have cheese on it. Sprinkling <laughs> Parmesan cheese. More Parmesan cheese. And if someone, like, doesn't give him, like, a whole tub of Parmesan cheese when you're in a restaurant, even though he's ordered, like, a lobster or whatever, <laughs> he's like, he, he sort of has a go at the waiter, or, like, not, not to their face. Obviously, he's too much of a coward, but he'll say to me, like, he didn't, he should have left the cheese. He said, cheat with the cheese. They don't give me any cheese. He just gave you three bucketfuls. Oh, it's a cheese. Should... It's more cheese here. <laughs> it's pathetic. Oh, so I just God. think we should do something to, because I'm panicked. I'm worried. You well, know, I'm worried. I started for your working out a little bit. I sort of work out twice or three times. I don't a think week. that's going to counteract it, Rick. And I drink water through the night when I wake up. I'm dehydrated from all the booze you've just drunk. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and I have a smoothie in the morning. Don't I? I don't. I, oh, you know what my views are on the smoothies. I don't think that's <laughs> counteracting. You're Andy Smoothie. You are. <laughs> I you're Andy Smoothie. Because I don't think it's counteracting problem, all the mate. other. You problems. have got a problem. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the smoothie. Right. Oh. Fine. Okay. Well, if you if you if you're happy to carry on as you are. Yeah. Go on. Um. Badly Drawn Boy, obviously, has done the soundtrack Loving of this it. new film, uh, About a Boy. Yeah. Which has got Hugh Grant in it. And, obviously, uh, this current single, uh, what's it called, the, the current one that's out? Silent Sigh, that's currently, obviously, that's being played on XFM. But this is another track from this album, which is the soundtrack. Lots of, kind of, uh, little bits of filler, bits of musical instrumental stuff, but all of it's very nice. This is a cracking tune, track three, Something to Talk About. Right, come on. Lovely. Yeah, good tune, that, I think. Uh, Sarah and Lauren have uh, emailed in. They said they wanted something from Elliot Smith or maybe Jimmy Webb. That's actually produced by the producer of Elliot Smith. And Is that a, a, I haven't brought element. any Jimmy Webb into that. I'm no, afraid. we'll maybe play that next time. I'll play some next, yeah, yeah, play some some next week. That's Badly Drawn Boy, though, from the uh, soundtrack to this film, About a Boy, and that's called uh, Something to Talk About. We've only got the stuff in the library. Do they want Four Non Blondes? Because <laughs> we've got that in the library, haven't we? The oh, best I, of Tony Basil. And we've got um, uh, just about every song that Excess ever recorded. Exactly. We don't play enough in Excess. Do I we? don't think we do, do <laughs> we? No. no. I yeah. can't believe it. Uh, um, yeah. XFM 104.9 coming up. White Van Man. White with Van Carl. Carl. White Van Carl. Uh, I was uh, obviously out with Carl last night. A lot oh, of people yeah. didn't realise this because we went out. There's, uh, what's the name of that evening? Marketplace. Extracurricular. Extracurricular. Yeah, various uh, XFM DJs go down there and just play an eclectic mix. Just spin some tunes Absolutely. And I'm thinking of doing it in a couple of weeks, Rick. And obviously, you know my turntablist skills now are, uh, are yeah. pretty. Yeah, something yeah. to behold. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, yeah, yeah. um,. Uh, I tell you this, what I did an amazing mix the other day with my friend Dan. We did. Yeah. We spent two and a half hours on it. This is how we spend our evenings now. Two and a half hours mixing from a trip hop sort of art, you know, hip hop style beat into uh, Arthur's theme by Christopher Cross. Great. When tune. you get caught between the moon and New written York by City. four people, four people. Bacharach, yeah. Carol Biasaga, Christopher Cross, and a fourth one. Absolutely. Phone in if you know that. Maybe we should. But um, who, who knows the fourth person credited on that tune? If you have a prize, seven hundred, eight hundred. One, two, three, four. Also, I want another, someone else to phone in. Right? I saw I saw an advert. Right? There's a, those advert toys. I think it must be. Is it because it's uh, Easter holidays or something? Right. And I was watching today, and there's uh, one of those transformer type things, and it goes in its shield. It strikes and then goes into its shield, and it goes into a little pod. And I'm sure it was called a bolock. <laughs> right. Now I, I must have misheard it. There's no way you can call a little kid's toy a bolock. So can you phone in? I'm I'm quite willing to be wrong. It'd be very disappointing. But you know, are people making little bolocks for kids? No. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, seven hundred, eight hundred, one, two, three, four. And what was the other question? 
Was there another, the other question was who uh, was, was the fourth, fourth person, person who wrote, wrote uh, Arthur's theme? Yeah. When you get caught between the noon and New York City. It's uh, crazy, it's but it's true. true. Yeah. The only thing you can do is fall in love, Carl. But what was that with Carl last night? Obviously, party animal. You know, he's hanging out with some of my friends. You enjoyed yourself, didn't you, Carl? It was all right. But uh, you were a bit worried about uh, Jennifer Lopez, weren't you? Yeah. What was the concern? Um, I don't really know what's going on in the pop world. Um, you you're joking? No. Go on. And um, I was here in the toilets, right? And I heard it playing out on the speaker, and I heard the DJ go, uh, "There you go. That's." Uh, Left Eye Lopez there. That's not... And I me. thought, it's Jennifer Lopez. No, it's the and she, had an, she had some sort of eye injury. <laughs> <laughs> that was you thought he was breaking the news of yeah. Jennifer Lopez losing an eye by it, calling yeah. her Left Eye Lopez? Yeah. Yeah. That's genius. Don't worry, we put him to... We put, we, we put him right, it's okay. Yeah. Except easy. Yeah. But you were worried for a while, weren't you? You were anxious for a while. I, I, I had no idea, and the thing is... I heard that on like Thursday, so for like three days I've been thinking. You've been panicking. Why is she called that? Because she changed her name before, hasn't she? To J Lo or something. Yeah. So I thought, you know. Yeah. And she got some people after her. Does she owe someone money? <laughs> Keep changing yeah. her name. That was Wobby Gabrielle <laughs> and Rise. <laughs> 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 anyway, more music, we? Oh, I'd love to. Yeah, what, what have you got? What have you got lined up there, Carl? Beat a band. Oh, oh yeah, 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 sweet, 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 but some, we're, we're playing some great music. We're playing some great tunes, aren't we? Absolutely. We're having some great chat. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's carry on. Let's continue. Well, absolutely. Well, obviously, Carl was out with me last night, and he saw that I'm, you know, he knows I'm a ladies' man, and that was obvious. Carl, you could see the vibe around me, couldn't you? Mm. When the, you know, when the chicks were talking to me, and uh, just re remembered recently, actually, I was on a train coming back from uh, hometown Bristol, and I was on the train, and uh, this girl walks on, good-looking girl. I thought, hey, up, it, largely empty carriage. I'm thinking, my luck's in. You know, because I, I take every opportunity, Carl. That's the thing about me. You know, I don't, I, I, I don't choose. She was good-looking girl. She sat down. I thought she was sat down right near me. I thought brilliant. As uh, the guy, this guy comes up behind her and says, "I think oh, it's probably a boyfriend or something." He sits down next to her, and I listen in on the conversation. You know, because I'm pretending to read. It was very clever. I read the same page for hours. So I was pretending to listen. I was listening but pretending to read. And um, I realised that it's not her boyfriend or anything. It's just some guy she's met on the platform. And I'm thinking, brilliant, if she's the kind of girl who's just going to start talking to someone, you know, on a platform, on a train, brilliant, I'm going to be in here. Because he was only going one stop. So I'm thinking, what's the worst that can happen? He'll nick off, you know, I'll get chatting to her, you know, and uh, who knows, I could join the, what's the, is there a train equivalent? The Foot High Club. <laughs> the Foot High Club, brilliant. And uh, so I'm excited, you know, I'm listening in. And uh, they're talking. it turns out that they're both kind of uh, graduates who've just finished university, or they're just they're coming to the finals or something. And they're chatting away, you know, and he's making a couple of witticisms, you know. And she's kind of tittering at his jokes. I'm thinking, well, I'll tell you this, if she's laughing at this kind of material, I am going to blow her away, you know, with my kind of anecdotes and wry observations. You know, yeah. it was weak stuff, i got to be honest. <laughs> really? He was coming out with nothing. He, yeah. he was running on empty, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And she was loving it. So I'm thinking, brilliant, I'm going to be right in here. And then they get moving on to higher break things, you know, and... Um, I think she was going to study kind of uh, Marxism or, so, or something like that, uh, or communism, something. And uh, she was asking him, you know, by way of conversation, she was asking him what he knew about Marxism, you know. Mm. And he was fumbling for some, his vague knowledge of it that he had in his yeah. life. And I'm just that, sat there thinking, yeah, come on, love, in any given capitalist environment, the proletariat will revolt against their oppression wow. by the bourgeoisie, and after a if brief it, period of socialist rule, emerges as a classist society governed by community corporations. Well, if that know. sort of talk wouldn't get a woman hot, I don't come know, on, I don't know what, what you'd use If then Marx to, and Engels is not going to get a woman sweaty down below... I then know, nothing is. No. Then my name is. You're Oscar's just biding Richard. your time. Yeah? Exactly. I yeah, thought, yeah, I'm, yeah, wait, yeah, I'm just yeah. going to go in for the kill any yeah, minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so anyway, uh, anyway, yeah, it, it's, it comes to his stop, right? He gets off. I'm thinking this is this is a piece of cake, and he gets off, and off he goes. He walks off, and I'm thinking brilliant. And I thought I'll wait. You know, I'll wait till the train's pulled. I'm not going to leap in straight away. No. And uh, he comes back along the carriage, and I'm thinking, hang on a minute. He goes, uh, listen, uh, do you mind if I give you my email address, Aww. right? And uh, if you want to get in touch, email me. I'm thinking, come on, you loser, get off now, save your face, please, <laughs> yeah. before it's too much. And she accepts the email address because she obviously doesn't want to hurt his feelings, whatever. I'm thinking, fair enough, she's a good woman, I'm liking her. I'm, yeah. her. I'm thinking, that's my kind of girl. So anyway, um, he gets off. I'm sat there, the train pulls away. I'm thinking, yeah, I'll wait a few minutes, you know, I'll just, you know, give it some time. Her phone rings, it's her friend on the phone. And, uh, she starts saying, and I was listening in, and she was going, uh, yeah, I just met a guy on the train. I'm thinking, yeah, that's true enough. She goes, yeah, he was a uh, good looking guy. I thought, you're having a laugh, love. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Because.
frankly, because I saw him. He had awful facial hair, if that's what makes him look like Boris Becker. A terrible little goatee beard. It was laughable. <laughs> I thought you. I don't know. And then she uh, goes. She goes to think, and she's like, "Yeah, I met him. We got chatting and stuff." You know. And I was, and she was going, "It's not often that. Um, it's not often that you meet someone. You know, generally in life, who's you know, kind of thoughtful and intelligent and funny." I thought to myself, "I'm not even going to waste my time with you, love." <laughs> Frankly, if that's what you thought of him. Ah, you just walked yeah. away. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't even bother talking to her. No, you were Did, just I didn't above even waste it. my time with her. If, if she thinks that bloke is not only great looking, was funny, but great funny looking. and intelligent, and she got on well, and he was polite, and it was a chance meeting, and he thought, and she, and she thought that you were like a freaky looking dork who didn't exactly. even have the nerve to if speak. That is what if that's she what she thinks, thinking, then well, she's I not, don't want to know her. I, I couldn't. Uh, you walked away, and good luck to you. And I have my dignity intact. Yes, and she's nothing. <laughs> Travis, flowers in the window on XFM 104.9. Well, coming to that time where we do White Van Man. Absolutely, with uh, producer Carl. And uh, Carl's gonna also going to be uh, telling us uh, his, uh, his slant on fables on Aesop. Absolutely. Um, I was out with Carl. I know I shouldn't be. Yeah, well, I, I broke the rule as well. I know. Well, I was out with him the night before, I think. And uh, we were just chatting. And um, as you know, uh, we're, uh, we're going to Edinburgh uh, for a week. Um, yeah, that's all three of us. That's all three of us, yeah. It wasn't. Um, I just wondered for a minute there if there was some arrangement you two had made. Like no. next weekend, just popping up there, seeing the sights. <laughs> yeah. No, we're going to do a, a week's broadcasting from the Edinburgh Festival. And, uh, you know, and Carl's going, I bet you lie in, don't you, and all this. And I'm going, well, yeah. He's going, well, he wants to be up at half nine and out looking at the sights, you know what God. I mean? Yeah. But anyway, and I said, uh, have you ever had haggis? And he went, it's black pudding in it. I went, no, it's, uh, it's mints. He went, I like mints. I went, yeah, but wait, it's mints in a sheep stomach, right? And he went, what, they force feed a sheep, then kill it? <laughs> Imagine that, Carl. It makes sense, though, doesn't it? No, it doesn't make sense. They force feed a sheep mints, and then kill it, till its stomach's nice and full, and they go, oh, this one's full, kill it, before it starts digesting it. Of course they don't. It's a membrane, they've... And the other one, he was talking about, like, um, he likes Richmond Park, he goes, I like to see all the deers. I went, it's deers, plural, you don't need to say. Deers. I try and educate them whenever I can. What's that one? I said that deer is already poor. Yeah, deer is yeah. I said, you know, like sheep or, or fish. So you can say fishes. And, uh, and, uh, we were laughing. So I said, um, do you know the, um, plural of, uh, mongoose? Because a lot of people think it would be mongoose. It's not, it's mongooses. Do you know what Carl said? Plural of mongoose. Mongoose, yes. Plural of it's, mongoose? It's worth a competition. No, it's not. No. No, go on. Carl, what did you think the plural of mongoose was? Mongs. <laughs> <laughs> play a record after this white van, man. Do you want to play, uh... Oh, let's play a bit of Dylan, yeah. Um, this is, this is a, 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 a beautiful track. Uh, it's, uh, uh, Just Like a Woman. <laughs> well, I think that's a beautiful record. Uh, it's by Bob Dylan, and it's Just Like a Woman. And... Carl went, he's got his headphones on, so he's speaking a bit loud. The harmonica's in, playing. In, in, a, in a whiny, mank accent, when the harmonica's going, That's an annoying sound, Matt, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> God. Oh, bless Bob him. Dylan there. An annoying sound there. Did you hear about... The annoying sound of Bob Dylan, like a <laughs> <your> new <laughs> album. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just that sort of sound always reminds me of um, a one-man band. Yeah. Have you heard the story about Leo Sayer with his song, One Man Band? No. Years ago, what, what year was... Um, Oh, God. I'm in the mood for dancing? Uh, what's the song that he did about a one-man band? I'm a one-man band, it was called. Right, yeah. Funnily enough. Yeah, on. he did that, one-man band, and he was playing it at the Dominion Theatre. Yeah. And apparently, whenever he played, he, he sort of sang this song, he got the audience involved, and the line in it was, a man, one-man band. Won't Nobody you? knows or understands. Is there anybody there can lend me a hand right. to my one-man band? He said that, and what he used to do, he used to reach out. Oh, and, yeah. And grab people's hands, and then he'd walk down the middle. <laughs> anyway, he said, won't anyone lend me a hand? And he stuck his hand out, grabbed like a hand, and was walking down, Every lo everyone looked horrified, and some woman who had like a plastic hand, it had come off. <laughs> <laughs> and he was walking down the middle of like Dominion Theatre with his plastic hand in his hand. <laughs> and he said, oh, that's a moment I won't forget. <laughs> he knows how to tell a story, Leo Sayer. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, it's time oh. for White Van Man, which is where we ask Carl the questions that the son asks someone else. Exactly. 
It's um, an article in there where they ask them, you know, typical man on the street, the, uh, the big questions of the day, uh, gives them their platform to the nation, and we think this is just too good to let out, because we, I mean, we only care about one person's opinion in the, in the, in the country now. That's true enough, he's the came man and there he is. There he is, right. Carl, your f- thoughts please on Kylie Minogue slagging off Britney Spears for ignoring her fans at her premiere. Are you aware of that story? No, she, uh, she got booed at her, uh, premiere of her, her new film. Britney because she uh, she'd left her fans waiting for like an hour. Some of them had travelled up from Bristol, other parts. Three thousand of, of them. Loads of them screaming for her. She just whisk- went straight into the theatre an hour late. Just gave them a quick wave and straight in. Didn't even and bother to shake their hands, signing autographs. Off. So they were booing. What do you think of that, Carl? And Kylie's obviously said that was like, outrageous, you know, and uh, you should treat your fans with respect. What do you make of it? Um. So she did wave. Like. Yeah, but literally as she was walking into the theatre. <laughs> was it raining? No, I don't think it was. Uh, he's like a defence lawyer, yeah. but who hasn't really read the brief. <laughs> exactly. So I was just like, just ringing it. Judge's so first record, was it raining? No. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. I was, I was relying on that. Uh, <laughs> um, was she running late for the start of the film? Yes, but that's her own fault. I mean, the people are inside. They're not going to start the film without her. It's Britney Spears. Yeah. She could take some time out. You know, when uh, Tom Cruise came here, he spent like an hour and a half shaking people's hands, talking to people on their mobile phones, all sorts. That's Tom Cruise. He's a bigger name than Britney. I know, but he's a smaller what, person, but he's a bigger name. What, what <laughs> do people want from people? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, an point. autograph, things like that, a photo. This one's going nowhere, Steve. Is there okay. another one? Fair enough. <laughs> I'd, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, you know, it's not bad. If she had more time, she might have done it. I bet she would have done it on another day. I mean, I'm not feeling too good today. I mean, <laughs> 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 but you're going to still take time out to sign people's autographs, surely, when you leave the building. Yeah, there's always a bit of a crowd, <laughs> isn't there? Next. Go on. Uh, what do you make of uh, a New York's a New York's ex police chief saying we need more bobbies on the beat? He's come over here. He's the guy that sorted out crime in New York City. He's come over. He said you're going all over the place here. Mm. You need more bobbies on the beat, not more policemen, more a visible police presence. There was there was something last week about um, <laughs> some copper in London who was sat on a sat on a bench, yeah. uh, and he was asleep or something, oh, yeah. and people were like outraged because like he, he should be looking after you know. England's people not nodding off on a, on a park bench, which is a bit daft because <laughs> they were shouting he should be looking after England's people. <laughs> yeah. well, he so should is be that, looking so after England's was this people. The, was this the 16th century you went back to? What do you mean that he should, he should be looking after England's people? You know, wherever he was, if he was in like a park somewhere, yeah. they, were, like, they were like really annoyed because he was asleep. But sure. He was probably undercover. It, if it, well, no, but the thing is, if there would have been any trouble, I'm sure he would have woke up. Yeah. If there was any sort of, if someone needed help, Mm. And he screamed. He would have woke up. So I don't know why they were having a go at him. Yeah, and, and he might not. He might not have been there at all. So you know, it was. You know, so yeah. he would probably have his radio turned on, didn't he? Yeah, listening to Heart. So you're not concerned then that there's not that the, the crime's going up. I think up there's and enough. I see quite a lot of them whizzing around. Okay, you're, you're yeah. happy then. Yeah, as long as you're happy, Carl. So you don't think it's too much crime? No. Just the right amount. Just the right amount of crime. Yeah. What yeah. about the fact that uh, new gambling laws give Blackpool the green light to become a British Las Vegas? What do you make of that? Are you a gambler? Little bit when I when I go on holiday, like going in the arcade and having a little flutter. Sure. Um, What's your favourite? I have a go on the, you know, the fruit machines. Yeah. There's a good one called The Simpsons. <laughs> right. Is that um, your favourite? Yeah, it's quite good. Is that a tie-in with the TV show The Simpsons? Yeah. Okay. Um, will they make Blackpool the next Vegas? I don't think so. No, no. Can't do see I. it happening. No. You been to Blackpool? Yeah. What was it? Was it it's, a, it's a bit rank. Is it? It is a bit rough. Okay. Needs a needs a lot of work doing on it. Yeah. Uh, no, that won't happen. Okay. And you're not worried about this encouraging gambling generally. You, you, gambling's not a vice you're concerned about. Uh, if you're a gambler, you, you're a gambler. Do you know what I mean? If yep. if Blackpool isn't done up, they'll go somewhere else to have a flutter. Sure. So it's not going to make any difference. Okay. No. Okay. It's really good. And uh, what do you make of the So Solid crew's Ashley Walters being jailed for 18 months? Obviously, not a very good example to uh, his young fans. He should have got more. Do you think? I had a dream about him the other night. Go on. About about the group itself. Okay. I had a dream that... Were they all there? Because there's yeah, a lot of them. I, c- of them. I couldn't remember all their faces. <laughs> the um, feature in a dream. I had a t-shirt on. <laughs> he had etc. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. two of them yeah. had etc. Yeah. I had a t-shirt on. You had a t-shirt on? Yeah, and it said on my t-shirt, so solid poo. And I was walking down the street and they came towards me. Wow. Just about to beat <laughs> that's me off a the great world. dream. That's amazing. <laughs> that's an amazing I love dream. that. That's, we've, all had, 30 year old. we've all had that anxiety dream. <laughs> Oh my goodness, what oh, if no. I meet the So Solid crew and I'm wearing oh, a t-shirt that slags them off? Oh, I don't believe it, yeah, you know, yeah. So what happened? Did you get beaten up in the I, It was one of them where I woke up. Do you know I've been telling you that I keep getting them things where you, you feel like you're falling? Oh, yeah. yeah. It was the same sort of thing. It's you like, know I'm not a real psychiatrist, don't you? You should, you <laughs> no, know what I mean? You, you do know a lot about a lot. 
Yeah, I do. Thanks very much. And you know, if I'm at home talking to Suzanne about something and, and I don't know the answer, I think right, I'll ask Ricky that one. Yeah. 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 Thanks. But you know that th I think you might mention before that apparently if you uh, die in a dream, it means that you're dying in real life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's it. If you don't. But uh, apparently, if you get beaten up by the So Solid crew <laughs> in a dream, it means you're being beaten up by them in real life. <laughs> yeah, that is true. So you probably work a lot, a lot of people have been doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> Absolutely terrifying. So yeah, lock him up for longer. Okay. okay. Finally, what do you make of uh, Halle Berry becoming the first black woman to win the oh, Best Actress Oscar? Did you see her speech? Oh, got on my nerves. Did it? I mean, you know, it is good that she won. You know, it's nice for anyone to win an award. Yeah. But she did go on a bit. And, you know, I've I've been in that same sort of position. What? <laughs> Placing an Oscar? <laughs> well, I got, um, it, what they used to do at school is, uh, <laughs> okay. if you did a full month without being off, you got a gold certificate. Okay. And I did a month once without having a day off. Sure. And I went up, and I didn't. I didn't do it. Make a fuss. <laughs> you didn't start crying. <laughs> Can't play a record, mate. Well done, though. Were well you done. the first kid in your school to do that? I don't think anyone else got the certificate. It was only because I was never in. They tried to encourage me. To <laughs> <in>. <laughs> it was just for you. <laughs> they mounted an entire the ceremony the just to encourage you. <laughs>
punishment. Yeah, that's, that's good. good fun, so yeah. that's it, it mean, doesn't yeah. bother you then that the fact that these fables have been used for many, many generations to educate maybe young children or even older people, the fact that they've served a brilliant function and they've become classics, that doesn't bother you? You've seen through them? Well, they don't always work. Okay. Uh, when I was out with Rick the other day, he brought one up. Oh, I told him the one about the, uh, the, the, the two mice, the industrious mouse who... Um, throughout the summer, he would be storing berries, nuts and berries, and he'd be storing it, and the other ones would just be eating off the trees and running around and having a laugh. And they'd go, well, you're going to become hungry. And they'd go, oh, I'll worry about that when it comes to it. And they'd do that, and he'd be storing his nuts and berries, and the autumn came, and the mouse was still playing and not doing anything. And then winter came, and the, and the silly mouse was, like, shivering. And he went and knocked on the, the mouse's door and went, I'm freezing and I'm starving. And the, and the clever mouse said, well, I told you, didn't I? You know, you should have been storing your nuts through winter like I did. Come in and share mine. You know. And, uh, what did you say, Carl? Well, and the moral of that is whatever. Well, uh, uh, yeah, you know, sort of, uh, you know, just be careful. Uh, but my thing is that, that it's not very good, because the moral of that is do what you want, and there's always a, a, a do-good or a chair there. Yeah, so, that's right, sure. Yeah. But, um, but the way I, w you know, I think, which is more sort of 2002, <laughs> the ending should have been, uh, you know, the guy with all the berries <laughs> should have, like, been like, you yeah, know, I'll be all right come the winter. I've got loads of food, I'll be safe. But then, as he's going into his little hut at the beginning of the winter, some sort of bus or something comes and kills him. Right. And it's like... You should have parted hard, because yeah, you might die. Yeah. Enjoy life whilst you've got it. Yeah. Okay, and if winter comes, just starve to death. <laughs> well, you know, worry about tomorrow tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm wondering fables. if there's a new book here. I really am wondering, <laughs> wondering not, if there's uh, a Carl's so Fables. He's, he's been coming out with the sum all week. He keeps going, well, that's a fable, isn't it? Yeah. So what's your favourite fable in there? Have you learned anything from this book? Uh, to get, you know, is there one fable you liked? Yeah, I mean, they're all, like? they're all all right. What did you like? Uh, you've thrown it on me now, there. Didn't you like one about a crab, you said? No, that was the one about messing about on a cliff edge or something. Don't what? mess about on a cliff edge. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. I, well, there's not many around here, so I didn't take much interest in that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? God. Um, I'm doing my best here. I'm you don't remember yeah, any of Here's one, yeah, here's one that was quite nice. Uh, there was a belly, you know, like your stomach. Yeah. And, uh and it's this belly on a pair of legs and the legs were saying I'm more important than you because I, I carry I carry you around and the belly said yeah but you know if it weren't for me holding all this food you wouldn't have the energy to walk around yeah and that means like you know rather than working on your own it's best to work in a team <laughs> yeah <laughs> so Good. well the one the one similar to that that I was taught when I was little was um um, a vision of uh, heaven and hell, and uh, in it went down to hell. And in hell, right, there was these you, people had like twenty foot long um, chopsticks, yeah. and they they were getting their food, and they would they couldn't get the chopsticks into the food and get it round their mouth because they were just too long. Right. right, and that was hell. And in heaven, they had exactly the same thing, but they were feeding each other. What? Right. You don't like Chinese food? Is that what you're thinking? <laughs> <laughs> is that what your concern is, Carl? No, I'm just... <laughs> my, see, my, the one I remember, and I, I can't remember the ending, uh. it's about two nuns in a bath. Yeah, oh, I know. I can't yeah. remember what it is. Yeah, that's that it, yeah. Or is it, are they on a bike? No, they're, 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 that's two adventures, it's the same nuns, <laughs> but the they go to all sorts of adventures. They, they're they, normally they, quite they... erotic adventures. <laughs> well, they are, there was one when they're driving down a cobbled street, I remember. <laughs> oh, God, go on, go And on. then there's the other, then of course they do. Whale Bones on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant Hello and there. Carl. Well, um, Carl, I, I really don't think you got your teeth into the fables, really. I don't think you... Uh... There wasn't anything to learn. I read a couple, thought, yeah, that's all right, and put it down again. There wasn't anything to learn. It was all stuff I knew already, <laughs> but made up with nice little foxes and bears and stuff. So... Yeah. But is that, that one about, like... That's one we spoke about, like, uh, when the hares are going, we should share all our food. And the lion said, that's a good argument, but you haven't got, it hasn't got the teeth and claws that we've got. That's lovely. Because it's sort of like, you know, that's an in indictment on, mm. sort of, you know, you could say it's an anti-equality almost. You know, you could get really sort of deep into that. You, you know what I mean? You could, no? Big oh, philosophical I'm... ideas in a nutshell. Not interesting? No, not really. Um, okay. Okay, then, well, th you're going to hate this, then. I've brought in the concise Oxford Dictionary of Quotations. Now, just look at some of your favourites. I'd suggest going to 
straight to things like um, Wilde or uh, Newton or Churchill or um, you're a big Keats. fan of Churchill. Churchill. Yeah, yeah. Like oh well, he's 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 the boy. Yeah, like, right, okay. Let's uh, go through that old Kramer. Blah, blah. Newton, right? Um, right. Here's a famous one. Okay, this is Isaac Newton. If I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Do you like that one? So there's a meaning in it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he hasn't actually stood on the shoulders of giants. So he's. So remember, he's a he's a, an amazing. Uh, uh, inventor and mathematician, and he discovered the incredible uh, laws of the universe. And and he's saying, yeah, if, if, okay. you, if you want a good view, <laughs> move into a multi-story. <laughs> he's saying, right? He's saying, if I've seen, if I have seen further than the people, and he's being modest here, it's because I've stood on the shoulders of giants to get that view. If it weren't for all the people that have come before him with their great insight and knowledge, he wouldn't have seen what he's seen. He's ta taken his learning, isn't it? Those people have. Well, I'll just say that. Instead of making up, it's, that, that's what I've got a problem with. People don't poetry, say what they mean. Poetry, art, and in yeah. life though, people never say what they actually mean. And you know, there's loads of books on it. I don't know. But but the point is that he's he's just summarised quite a tricky idea, beautifully. It's in a beautiful. Sentence. That 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 that's that that gets into you much deeper than just the words and just the literal. Words, you know what I mean? One it, of my favourites is from an American novelist, and the quote is, talking about the subject of fame and being famous, yeah. fame is a mask that eats into the face. Don't you think that's amazing? Meaning? Well, meaning that the fame, that fame is something that is artificial, that you wear initially, you become famous, but it's, it's, it's ethereal, it's nothing, it's intangible, it's just an artifice. But if you stay famous long enough, you begin to think that that mask you're wearing is really your real face, so that you begin to, you know, think that you are more than, than you perhaps are. Do you see what I mean? In the way that fame and power can corrupt. I know who said that. No, it's an American novelist, I forget his name. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. What's, what, <laughs> okay. what, uh, pick another one, right? Yeah, let's have a look. Um, oh, Bernard Shaw, he's no slouch. I let's think maybe when you read, when you take this book of quotations home, Carl, you should maybe just draw up maybe a list of three or four of your favourites yeah, like, and, and tell Shaw, them next week. I want you Shaw, um, Wilde, uh, I look at Shakespeare as well, you know, he's... Uh, yeah. what, you, are you a fan of Shakespeare? No. Go on, what's your, what's your problem with it? Just um, the way they speak, can't, sure. I can't follow it. Yeah. yeah. Do you like West Side again, Story? It's, it's really old as well, I can't relate to it. It's, it's like years and years ago, isn't it? That's why I like Churchill, because... 1940s. Yeah. Not Look at ago. this, look at this. This is uh, Shaw, okay? There are two tragedies in life. One is not to get your heart's desire, the other is to get it. Uh, again, uh, how would you see that? In your little... Well, that's, your, that's one homework then. I'll mark that. That's your homework. You've got to work that out. You've got to tell me what you think of it. S say again. Don't ask Suzanne. It's there. All right, all right. There are two tragedies in life. One is not to get your heart's desire. The other is to get it. Okay? Take that home with you. And we'll be um, hearing Carl come up with some amazing quotations next week. Yeah, pick out your favourites. Now I'd like to uh, play a song for the lovers while he's thinking. No, I don't think we've got the lovers lined up. Oh, uh, what have we got? A bit of hip hop. It's hip hop hooray. Oh, is it? Yeah, everyone's a big fan. Uh, I played something from this last week. It's uh, this new album from Nerd, In Search Of. It's been uh, re recorded by the lads, I don't know why. And um, anyway, it's particularly good. We played last week, Things Are Getting Better. This is the one we have played with in the past, actually. Bobby James. <laughs> Doves, there goes the fear on XFM 104.9. Well, just read that book anyway. I'll just, I'll just, can I just say, uh, this is one of a, a beautiful, is Keats, right? Um, what do you think of this? A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness. See, this, this is just like how it was at school now. I've, uh, the last couple of weeks have been quite interested in what you've been giving me. Now it's, it's really like... Okay. I really don't care. Now this. The, what about this? Now no, I, I, not, I, I, not, not I did philosophy, and philosophy is obviously the you know the quest for knowledge. And it's, you know, it's a look. Listen to this though. This is what Keats came out with. Philosophy will clip an angel's wings. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Don't be constrained by what's you know. Dream a little. You know what I mean? Just go beyond. I don't agree with it, but it's a lovely. It's a lovely bit of poetry. Yes. Yeah. So you're going to read that for me, are you, Carl? Yeah. Yeah. Just pick out five of your favourites. Yeah. The ones that mean something to you. And then ne next week I'll bring you in pictures of animals. Brilliant. Okay? Yeah, we'll do it. Okay, and some sweets. <laughs> Rick, um, I've had a word with some of the uh, the top brass here. Well, they had a word with me in the corridor. If you remember Did when they we started... Did they say, what, who are you? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oi, four eyes. 
Um, yeah. And, uh, no, they said they were saying, that, you know, obviously enjoy the show, they love it. And, um, they're just worried, though, that in the early days when we started the show, you remember, we were a lot more informative. We used to do the film reviews, yeah. those things like the gig guide and stuff sure, like sure, that. Sure, sure, sure. Which we've kind of let yeah, go by the, the thing about way, sorry. The, yeah, so, they want us to bring up that. Well, no. exactly, so I just want no, to... No, 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 the gig guide, I was worried that, funnily enough, the XFM gig guide, it, it, gig guide does not include some of the biggest bands in the world. Okay, all right. Or, or some of the best venues. That's what worried me. Don't, look, Rick, but, just do what you're told, right? Oh, there's, there's, there's the gig guide. Is it got better? It's got a lot of big names Am I going to be impressed? On you're going to love the gig guide. I need a bit, if this is going to be pretty well, impressive. Let's, do the pro let's play the proper jingle. Okay. Okay. Ah, tonight, uh, if you want to, oh, hey, if you want to see these two bands in a small venue, get down to the Metro Bar on Oxford Street. Doors are at 8pm and tickets are only six quid to see Ten Benson and Beach Buggy. <laughs> All right? Now, if you missed Long Wave supporting the Strokes at Brixton Academy last night, you can catch them headlining Casino Royale at the Monarch. Rick, I missed them last night. How much will I be paying for that? You'll only be paying five pounds, right? But listen, they're also supported by Shelby and I Remember Nothing. <laughs> Brilliant. Now, now, people know about the Rickson Academy, but a little-known uh, venue in Rickson is the Windmill. <laughs> okay. And you're, you're going to see three great bands there tonight. Guapo, <laughs> okay. Plonkes, and Mechanical Beatles Never Quite Warm. <laughs> so, uh, Orange Goblin and Grand Magus play the garage. And, uh, well, the, the Diffin, what's it, Diefenbach and Sudden play the Rotar Sessions at Nine Hills Arts Club. So that's the gig guy, the next <laughs> <film>. <laughs> What a load of rubbish. <laughs> I mean, st switch off the jingle. Look at this. Uh, We've discussed this before, haven't we? Names for bands that will never be anything. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Mechanical Beatles, Never Quite Warm. <laughs> please welcome to oh. the stage Plankwev. <laughs> please welcome oh. to the stage Orange Goblin. <laughs> Oh, goodness me. Look oh, at this. Oh, God. Orange Goblin. Uh, Orange Goblin. <laughs> it's so what's rubbish. His, what's his name? Uh, um, got a fake town, hasn't he? That one of his mark, come, uh, supermarket suite. What's his name? Dale. Dale Winton. Dale Winton, yeah. Supporting R.E.M. I remember nothing. <laughs> Never gonna happen. <laughs> it just, I mean, please. Come on, people. Think. Hey, here's a band that plays big venues. Doesn't make them better, sure. But this is Radiohead, this is uh, Song for the Lovers, and Let Down, off OK Computer. This is beautiful. So, you see, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. Does, doesn't that move you at all, Carl? Philosophy will clip an angel's wings. There was an old lady from Ealing <laughs> who was put into... Radiohead. Let down off OK Computer. Apparently we missed a, we missed a gig on that gig guide. Uh, Drip Feed are playing the Rock Garden on the 21st of this month. Excellent. So uh, the lead singer just called in cool. for that. He also uh, left a quote with me. Uh, apparently uh, uh, Coleridge said of Keats, wasn't it? He's uh, like an archangel, slightly damaged. Rick, I'm worried we're getting a little bit highbrow. Do you reckon? Have you got any knob gags you could do quickly? Because I'm just thinking we're switching. There's a lot of people who are going to be turning off. Um, I uh, mean, currently, currently on Capital FM, Chris Tarrant... And Dr. Neil Fox together at last. The partnership at last, we've always they wanted. said it would never happen. Do you know I'd like to see together uh, that breakfast DJ Sarah Cox and who's the the uh, dance DJ um, Carl? Oh, Carl uh, be Carl Cox. Carl, please. Why are you getting you're suddenly saying these rude words? We've been reprimanded yeah, once. Don't Carl, say please. that and don't say it so aggressively because it sounds like you're saying Cox aggressively. Come on, we've been reprimanded. Yeah. Why? That, just don't use language like oh, that. It's okay, annoying man. me. Come on. Why is it annoying you? Because We're talking about DJs, that's yeah. their names. Well, you, you try to be clever. I, I hardly think that's me, clever. You've given me a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if that's my best attempt at being clever. I've got rubbish homework this week. Okay, he's really upset he's about really this. Upset. He was looking forward to st uh, an uh, animal fat. You said so you were going to bring in that big book, 500 It's animal so... It, I got it off one of those bargain books. So I what? thought it'd be easy, right? Cause it's, it's, but it's too elementary. No, but that's more useful than that to me. But it's things like... It seems like the tortoise has a shell to protect it. That's good. <laughs> yeah, but you know... Because you thought it was there just to be painted on it. <laughs> 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 oh, have you, ever, have you ever peeled a tortoise? They fly, they go about 400 miles an hour. It's to weigh them down because they're the fastest lizards known to man. <laughs> exactly. Honestly, they run so fast they can go through walls. Yeah. And so they're... they're that, that their shells put on them in the hospital, in the maternity ward, at a very early age, just slow them down. You let a tortoise out uh, a shell and you won't catch it. Steve, do you know that turtles can breathe out of the bum? Turtles can breathe out of their bum? I know someone who can talk out of it, but <laughs> didn't realise that. 
uh, that you, well, tell us about that. Tell us about that. Then. How that, do they that's do that? It, that's all I know. They get, when they go swimming, they can sort of uh, <laughs> if they don't want to get their stick their head out, they can just <laughs> stick their arse out. Yeah. Why, why uh, don't they want to stick their head out? I don't know. Just uh, if I, I don't know, maybe they don't need they need to be looking for food under the water. Yeah. And if they stick their head up to get some air, they might miss something. Wouldn't it be easier to have an arse that could um, forage for food? So they could sort of like lounge in the pool like a jacuzzi and they're looking around going, all right, hello, <laughs> hiya. And meanwhile, it's arse is like munching grass. Yeah, bad Wouldn't breath. that be easier? Bad, bad breath. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish I understood what that meant. Um, yeah. In all this it's hilarity. It's like a quote, isn't it? But in all that this hilarity, I'm worried we've um, forgotten the true meaning of Easter. <laughs> no, come on, Rick, come on, come on, you're just, you know, you're being frothy and lightweight and a little bit rude, but, you yeah. know, it is, it's a time for remembering. And chocolate. That, um, someone did die for their our sins. Yeah. So, can we be just... Be ashamed to disappoint him. Yeah, can we just think about that and just take a moment just to consider that? Yeah, can we do that? Right. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. You understand the true meaning of Easter, it's not just about eggs and bunnies, you no, understand no, no. it, don't you? Yeah. What's your memory of it? What's your understanding of it, Carl? Did, what Easter, you, did, what's it all about for you? What do you have to do at school? Do you have to do anything at school? Uh... I think we got a long weekend off. <laughs> okay. Really? <laughs> yeah. What did they call that weekend? Easter weekend. Brilliant. Okay. okay. And what was the reason for that? What? Why did we have Easter weekend off? Jesus. Yeah. But what did he do? He uh, he put himself on the cross. Yeah. yeah. Well. Well, he didn't put himself on. No. Does it mean anything to you? Are you moved by that story? Again, too long ago for me to sort of. <laughs> okay. Um, you know. To worry about, to it. sure. Yeah, I mean, if there'd have been an Anderson shout were involved, yeah, you'd have been, you'd have been there, wouldn't you? You're not well today, are you, Carl? Not at all. Don't know no. what's wrong with me today. I've, I've, I've got a bit of a temperature. Have you? Do you know Steve? Uh, like, you know, he's always on the go at me. Last night when we were out with his mates, yeah, they said he was a bit of a hypochondriac himself. Did they? Yeah. What did they say? What were they saying? He said. Uh, they said. I said Steve's told me he's not feeling well. Is, you know, is he all right? You live with him. He said, oh, I don't worry about that. Really? So he's always saying that, and I said, that's a bit of a fable. I said, cry wolf. <laughs> yeah, one day he'll say, I've got a temperature, and they go, oh, I've had the lemsip, and he'll die. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've learnt my lesson. Yeah. There, there was one about cry, the boy cried wolf. It, the, uh, the moral can surely only be, never tell the same lie twice. You know what I mean? Because if he'd have like, come up with a different one, he'd have kept them going all year, I reckon. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah, I never thought of it like that before. What are we gonna play? A final tune? Have we? What well, we got? We got? We got a bit of suede, haven't we? Well, it depends. Let's get a bit of suede in and song for the ladies. Let's go over. What's the? So what is it? Turn the football. Sure. It's only the football. You can't, don't say that. Yeah, I'll give us your song. What's the football? What's the match? What's this? A lot of uh, the gig guide oh. is long wave and guapo and plankers. What's this? What's the football match? So what are the football matches XFM covering? I don't know. What? what Come song on. Would you like track 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 eight? So Bolton versus Barnsley. <laughs> you don't like sport though, do you? A lot well, of people who do. Huh? A lot of people who do. Right, track eight, what are we going for then? Uh, we're going for, uh, it's a bit of Stevie Wonder. Yeah. And, uh, I think it's quite a short song though, Carl. Are you gonna, are you sure? No, that's cool, yeah, that's cool. It's okay, you're okay, are you? Yeah, yeah. So this is the final song, This it? lost a lot of energy, this show. This is it. I think the first hour and forty minutes, I think, was dynamite. I think the last ten have been, uh, but flagging. But I Carl, he was, he was full of life, you know, he was answering the questions and stuff, and now you And he got, it, he got you're fed up, he got fed up with the quotations. He didn't like us mentioning, um, uh, Radio 1 DJs, such as Sarah... Cox. And Carl. Oh, Cox? Yeah, he didn't like that. Sorry, everyone. I 